Uh, this is the guy in the draft that you really wish Bob Cole would come out of retirement just for one day to try to pronounce the name. Um, here we go. Marat Kuznetinov. It's the only time I'm going to try Kuznetinov. That's that's it. Okay, two times. He's a center. He's five foot nine. He's 165 pounds. He's likely to go in the second round of the draft, and since Ottawa has a bunch of second round draft picks, why not talk about Ottawa? And and we're in Ottawa jersey here. Now, being a center and being on the smaller side, you would think, well, a small center, second round. I don't know. He's a fascinating prospect. So, HockeyProspect.com has him at 39th. Uh, Elite Prospects has him at 53rd, so that's both of those are in the second round. Uh, Central Scouting has him at number 12 on the European Skaters list. And Bob McKenzie has him at 35th. So, he could be early in the second round, could be mid-second round. It really depends on who's drafting where and what's going to happen. But again, we're in a pretty deep draft. And so I will continue this playlist on through. Uh, strengths, playmaking, speed, and teamwork. But this is not a guy who's going to be over here playing in North America next year or the year after. So this is the thing. Which general manager could potentially have extra picks to say, we don't need a guy who's going to come over right away. We can, we can make the long-term uh, projection this guy's going to be on the team, say, three years from now. That could very well be where Marat fits in. 2018-2019, uh, playing in the under-17 team, 11 games, 8 goals, 10 assists, 18 points. Under-18 team, he only played the one game, had a goal and two assists. This year, playing in the MHL, which is the junior leagues for the Russians. Uh, 44 games, 13 goals, 25 assists, 38 points. Those points are impressive, but... And that's the thing. There seems to be asterisks when it comes to his point totals and his performance. He had 12 points in four games the last week of January. Seven of those points were against a Chinese team that, as a team, has defeated by a combined score of, I think it was 24-3 to in the games they played against them. So, again, he performs well, but it's in it's at times, and it's not all the time. It's it's that inconsistency that causes him not to be a first rounder. He also needs to get stronger for the National Hockey League. He hasn't played against men yet. As I said, he was playing in the juniors, and when he played at the the uh, WJAC, um, his his performance was not sparkling. And so when he's when he's playing with players who are of his skill level or higher, the complaint seems to be he's not very visible out there and he's not really a big difference maker so this is again why he's not a first rounder and he needs to be a third or he may very well slide into the third potentially so first second third round we'll see uh solid defensively despite being smaller so this is the one part where if you can say well his offense isn't consistent the defense seems to be he sees the ice very well his defense seems to be pretty darn consistent and so, again, good, smaller, defensive forward, he can do that. He can score at times, maybe not entirely consistent yet, but with the right training, maybe. Uh, he won over 60% of his face-offs. So that's another key thing, too, is when a kid's pretty good at face-offs right out of the gate. Uh, you'll look at the, the worst performers in the NHL when it comes to face-offs, and very often... It's the rookies. It's the kids. If a guy comes into the NHL and he can win face-offs right out of the gate, that's impressive. So at any level, being over 60% on your face-offs is nothing to sneeze at. Even though it's allergy season again. It's always allergy season around here. But uh, yeah, over 60% of the face-offs. What are scouts saying? Well, uh, he's a tough one. Some games he's an easy first-rounder and others he's a no-show. This is the consistency. Uh, one of the better smaller players in this draft, second rounder all day long. My favorite scouting report I read was just who the bleep is that. Concise, to the point, sounds good. Uh, and I'm, I'm impressed that Hockey Prospect included that in their draft book. Good call. Um, and, and, and that's the kind of scouting report that... I, I willingly pay for her. That's a, a scouting report. I, I like the honesty in the scouting reports on, on Hockey Prospect, again, because they have the NHL scouts who are left unnamed, and uh, they just they give you the straight facts. And when I'm when I'm doing these prospect videos, I, I try to make sure that I'm, I'm using the ones that 
are, are neutral and maybe they warn you a bit about what the drawbacks are with the player. But there are some, some prospect reports that I look at and say, oh, I can't throw that in the video. That just sounds awful. And not necessarily on, on, on this guy, but on, on many of them I've already profiled where I was like, oh, I can't can't throw that in the video. That just sounds terrible. It just it would feel like I was picking on the poor kid. So he scores in bunches. He's inconsistent. But again, there's a general manager who may look at that and say, he's young. We can fix that. The fact that he's good defensively and he wins his face-offs, maybe he turns into a Radic Foxa. Radic Foxa uh, didn't necessarily become what the Stars draft would be. I use him as an example because he became very good defensively, great on face-offs, and just very good at the shutdown role when he needs to play it. So while the offense will likely never reach the levels that Dallas had expected when they drafted him, it's okay because he's very good defensively and he's good at the fa in the face-off dot. So... For Marat here, that may very well be the case as well. He is going to have to play in the KHL. He's going to have to get experience playing against men. He's not a player that you would see likely come over to play in North America for at least a couple of years, but he might be worth taking a, a, a flyer on in the second round, especially if you've got extra second round picks, which the Senators have. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always regarding this player in the 2020 draft. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And yes, at some point soon, I will be doing some sort of a um, mock draft, which will be highly, 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 highly incorrect. Because I've looked at mock drafts from all over. And man, once you get out of that top three... Yeah, it's all over the place where people are being drafted. And I look at some of the mock drafts and I go, oh, there's no way that guy's going that late. Oh, that guy's way too early on that draft. So I'll do my own mock draft. I'll be as incorrect as everybody else. And it'll be a lot of fun next month when the draft happens. Yeah, the draft's still going to happen. We usually have that done in June. But I, it is going to happen next month. We will have a draft. And, and then we'll have free agency after that. It'll happen. So there you go. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I'll talk to you again soon.